Welcome and thank you for coming. My name is Phoebe V. Manak and the seminar today is presented to you by Eloise Bliss. Nest boxes are a fantastic way the community can get involved in environmental projects and providing alternative habitat solutions to some of Australia's most threatened species, such as the lead beater possum and the squirrel glider. There are growing communities, individuals, government and non-government organisations getting involved in the nest box programs across Victoria. However, there is no overall picture of who is installing these nest boxes, the location of boxes, how many there are, target species and the species actually using them, as well as the ongoing maintenance, monitoring and collection of this data. Hence, 81 contributors and myself have curated the article Nest Boxes for Wildlife in Victoria, an overview of nest box distribution and use, published in the Victorian Naturalist last year and brought you this seminar today. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a greater understanding of the current state of all 9,986 nest boxes across Victoria. Nest boxes are an essential conservation tool to support native hollow dependent fauna by increasing opportunities for nesting and denning. This is especially critical for areas where natural habitats have been reduced either due to fire, areas cleared for grazing and areas of revegetation where trees still need to mature before providing appropriate housing and protection. A large majority of these programs are volunteer based and require the people power to get these projects started and the ongoing financial support and some scientific guidance into the proper monitoring and co data collection. A staggering 6% submit their data into public databases such as Victorian Biodiversity Atlas and the Atlas of Living Australia. These public databases are critical as the information is a core input into the majority of government processes and programs that impact native species. As previously mentioned, the overall aim of this article was to create a collective database and summary of all nest boxes across Victoria, but also to contribute to the current knowledge on nest box effectiveness and the improvement of contribution of nest boxes to species conservation. This report is a descriptive summary of responses and in no way an analytical investigation of nest box use by fauna and should be viewed as a baseline data point. A statewide email was sent out to all Victorian organisations that were known to coordinate, fund and or support nest box installation. 81 organisations replied outlining the programs they were involved in. Such large organisations include Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, Parks Victoria, land care coordinators, trust for nature, and all city and shire councils. The information requested included number of nest boxes and their location, species that were targeted and which species had been recorded to use the boxes, and finally the information about data collection, storage, analysis, and publication. Today I'll go through a collective summary of these findings. Firstly, I wish to define a program as a group of nest boxes as many organisations and individuals involved in these programs would often install many boxes at a time. A total of 98 programs represent over 9,900 individual nest boxes across Victoria. 72% of those boxes are community-based conservation and environmental groups. Interestingly, Guide Dogs Victoria was the only non-environmental group to install nest boxes. Conservation Management Network Group established the largest number of nest boxes in a single program who installed 1,100 boxes. The Field Naturalist Club of Victoria for the Brush Tail Pastigal installed the first boxes over 20 years ago in 1998. Across Victoria, the highest density of nest boxes is in central Victoria around the Mount Alexander, Mount Macedon Ranges and the Mitchell Shires, as well as in the northeastern corner around the townships of Ballina and Wodonga. Nest boxes are installed on private properties, state forests, national parks and urban parklands. 80% of all locations had between 1 and 160 boxes in each area and 18 sites had over 200 boxes. After the devastation of numerous bushfires in the past five years, there has been an increase by local communities to install nest boxes to support native fauna. It was reported that 89% of nest boxes were being used and 73 programs had a particular species in mind when planning and installing, most commonly the brush-tail pestigal, shore gliders and possums in general. The data didn't specify how many species were in each box, but rather how many species were in each program. As we can see from the table, the most common species were sugar glider possums. European honeybees were the most invasive species and were found in 33 of the programs. 
This means that they surpass the number of bush tail pestigales, which is considered a vulnerable species. From the table, we can also see that most of the boxes are being used by native and threatened species, as this is the whole aim of the project. However, there are some incidences where introduced and invasive species are using these boxes. There are some cases where the infestation can be so severe, removal of the boxes is necessary. There are several ways that this issue be could be overcome. Regular maintenance, scientific input, and the adjusting of nest box design. Formal and regular checks are essential for general maintenance to check for infestation and create a reliable data set. 39% were checked less than one year since insulation and 5% were not checked at all. Many of these groups are run by volunteers and more often than not, these organisations lack both time and resources. This image indicates an arborist who performs checks on boxes. However, hiring men such as this one can be expensive if no one in the community is comfortable getting on high ladders. Even if monitoring was complete, many were still unclear about what details to monitor and how to store the data. It is for this reason that some scientific mentoring could be beneficial to these local community groups. To accurately and correctly collect data is critical for scientific research and the communication of this data is even more so. Each organisation and community group has their own way of communicating this information with the public, such as local newsletters, articles and some appearing in peer-reviewed literature and journals. So for only 6% of that data to be published on public databases, on databases that the government use for making important environmental decisions is extremely worrying. For some groups, they expressed plans to do so, but many were not in the position as they had incomplete monitoring, data collection, or they found the whole process to be too tedious. Another way that environmental scientists can be involved is through consultation. As one individual party saw the advice of an ecological consultant for the best location of a nest box placement, students at university were often used to help with surveying of areas as well. Community involvement is a huge part of these projects and often men's sheds are used in the construction of these boxes. General plans can be found all over the internet, however a 2016 article in the Journal of Environmental Management by Modi Carter indicated that the size of the entrance has a major impact on the type of species that reside in nesting boxes. She goes on to mention that the most invasive alien species overcame already existing nests occupied by native birds and by exploiting limited breeding resources. Therefore, further scientific advice and consultation would be beneficial to small local environmental groups as a way to specifically target native species. To summarise today's presentation, nest boxes are a simple way to provide habitat for native fauna in areas where natural tree hollows are limited. Local community groups are a huge contributor to nest box installation and involve a wide variety of group types from the incorporated or organisation affiliated groups to local environmental groups. Although the idea seems simple and effective, nest boxes can house invasive species that damage the local fauna. There are also a few questions that this study raises and remain unanswered. Does the use of nest box by individual animals have benefit for the whole population? The factors that most strongly influence use by native fauna and if the increase in nest box by common species, is this a detriment to less common species? The cooperation between scientists and community groups is needed to obtain greater insight from the current activities. I propose a statewide standard in regards to the monitoring and collection of data with the input from scientific bodies which are easy to maintain and cost effective. The collection and analysis of this data can start to answer some of these critical questions and can dramatically assist in the conservation of some of Australia's most threatened species. Thank you.